Hello fellow nomads. Uh, we are in Arizona. It's summer. It's going to be about 110 degrees outside and we have chosen not to turn on our air conditioner. We're going to try something new and see if it works. So one of the things about staying in Arizona that makes it uh, a little bit different than staying in other parts of the country, especially in summer, there's, there's no humidity. It's very, very low humidity. And one of the things I've seen a lot out here is what they call swamp coolers um, or evaporating coolers. And the technology behind this is very, very simple, but it really does a good job. So. Because we're gonna be here for a while and we're not gonna go anywhere and it's gonna be about 110 degrees uh, this week, is that we wanted to see if a swamp cooler is going to do the job. Now, I've seen this thing in an RV. Um, I've seen it working. And quite frankly, I was really super impressed with how cool it got. Because our airstream is not that big, it's only 180 square feet, this will, will cool up to 500 square feet. Well, we're gonna test it and see if a swamp cooler, that by the way, only runs on 90 watts and pulls only 0 0.09 amps, can not only cool our Airstream, but see if it'll run on solar. So we're gonna unbox this, we're gonna test it, and we're gonna show you the results. So this product I'm going to demonstrate is the Hasair MC18V. Uh, I bought this at Ace Hardware here in Cottonwood, Arizona. I've seen this thing work live and I was very impressed with it. Um, one of the things that um, I want to really kind of set this off right in the beginning of this video is that this is for low humidity areas. This is not going to work in Georgia the same as it would work in Arizona. This needs a very low humid area to work. Okay, a couple things from the instruction manual that says key operational points. One, your cooler must be positioned in front of an open window. The more heat, the better. So this is not going to be like an air conditioner uh, where you close all your windows. This is going to be something where you actually leave maybe one of your windows open in front of this. In this case, we're going to leave our door open, which is going to be right in front. So uh, always ensure that there is another open window or door through which air can exhaust from the room. At the end of each day, run your cooler on fan only for 30 minutes to dry out the rigid media. So in the back of this, it's going to get wet and you want to dry that out so you don't get mold and mildew that gets built up. So anyway, let's go through the operating procedure. I'll show that in. We're going to turn it on and we'll see how it works. Okay, so the setup is really, really simple. You put three gallons of water in it. You uh, prime the pump. It does have a water pump in it. It also has like a, a float in there. You can hook up a hose to it and actually works just like, kind of like a toilet does. It's got a ball cock. When the water goes down, the ball cock lifts. It lets water in there. So you could actually hook up a garden hose uh, to this. I'm not really sure I'd want to do that inside an RV in case of mechanical failure, but you're more than welcome to try it. I did I did hook on the hose adapter, um, but I don't think we're gonna go there. Um, I'll just go ahead and fill it manually. Uh, it'll run on a high fan uh, for about three hours, and then you're gonna have to refill that water pan, and so there is some maintenance involved with this. We've just turned it on. It's, I mean, it'll take you about five minutes to set the whole thing up, um, including adding the water, uh, again, it's about three gallons of water, priming the pump, and then turning on the fan. Um, and uh, we're going to see. So right now, the temperature in here is at 86 degrees. And then I'm going to put this next to the fan to see what the air temperature is blowing out. And we'll get a reading from there, and we'll see, we'll see what the temperature is. So I've had this in front of here for just about, uh, I don't know, about three minutes. It's gone from 86 to 79. So it is blowing out some really cool air. Uh, 
this is supposed to be cool 500 square feet of, uh, of air temperature. So you can see, you can also see the humidity is rising a little bit. So we are at 16%, we're at 36. So it is putting humidity in the air, but that's a pretty nice temperature. 77, now let's put it in the back of the Airstream and let's get a reading on, on uh, how, how far this can go. So how does it feel? Oh my God, it's a huge difference from the air conditioning unit. Now, um, you can feel the moisture in the air. It's a stronger, cooler, uh, like uh, like a breeze. Um, it, but you can feel it actually, it's more powerful for a longer duration of length. So I can feel, so the air conditioning unit is right above me and this is what, two feet? in front of us and I can feel it going further than where the air conditioner can actually reach. So that's pretty cool, which I think is going to cool off our dogs a lot more directly. So it's good so far. Okay, so it's about 97 degrees air temperature right now in Cottonwood, Arizona. We're going to go inside the Airstream and we're going to see what the temperature is inside the Airstream running our swamp cooler compared to what it would be if we had been running our air conditioner. So we've been running this for about four hours. Let's go see what the temperature is inside the Airstream. Okay, so 81 degrees is not bad for two o'clock in the afternoon out here in Cottonwood. That uh, usually peak heating time out here is probably gonna be around three to four o'clock p.m. Uh, we haven't reached that peak heat yet, uh, but 81 degrees and we have a very cool breeze. You can definitely tell the difference when we walk inside the airstream. That's not bad. Uh, normally, our air conditioner would be We'd be around 77, 79 degrees uh, at this time of day. So not a big temperature difference, but definitely enough to keep our dogs nice and cool. They seem to be enjoying it. And if our dogs are happy, we are happy. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, and this is the real test, and this is one of the reasons why we bought this is that I'm gonna plug this into solar and you know we'll do some tests and see how well it runs on our solar. Okay, so I plugged in our uh, Hessar, uh, our call a swamp cooler, uh, into our solar, and I've also plugged in our low energy refrigerator in our uh, solar too. So we have a 1500 watt inverter, a pure sign inverter. We have a 3000 watt load. Uh, so it can more, more than capable of handling the refrigerator and our uh, cooler at the same time. Uh, in fact, I have it plugged in the same outlet. So we're gonna kinda see what the readings are for a moment. Everything looks fine, everything's running normal. Uh, we've ran the um, our uh, air cooler for about 30 minutes on solar and the temperature is still at 81 degrees. It hasn't changed one bit. So, so far, so good. Okay, so the company Hesiar used to actually make industrial evaporator coolers um, so you'd see these in big mechanic garages auto auto mechanic garages uh, they were huge and they would blow cold air using this cooling system um, and so they bought a company in Phoenix and are now making portable ones this is the one I have the technical term is mobile evaporative cooler so this is how it works it really is a very low mechanism type system um, it has a water container that can hold about four gallons of water. It's got a small pump in there. The pump then pumps water into fins that are in back of the cooler. And as heat hits that, it generates a cooling effect and the fan blows out cold air. The cold air is really cold, by the way. And so you can replace the fins in the back 
they say that the fins are good for about three years. If you're gonna put this in storage for the winter, there's two screws you can take out and you just take a hose and, wi and wash the dust away. Very easily to do on a very soft spray. And this should last you for about three years. So here's what our take is on it. And again, it's up to you and your lifestyle on how you uh, look at these good, bad, and different. We look at it as we like boondocking. We don't like being at RV parks. And so if we can run our, if we can run a air conditioner type in very low hum humidity climates, low hum humid climates like Arizona, California, New Mexico, Utah, which we spent a lot of time in, then this unit is good if we can run this on solar. So if we can get our Airstream when it's almost 100 degrees outside, if we can get this down to 80 degrees inside and have really cold air blowing for the dogs and for us, that's a win-win, especially with the specs. The specs are 0.9 amps. And even if you round that up to one amp, that means it's running on 120 watts, which is very low wattage for our solar system. We have 700 watts, 1500 watt inverter. That's very low watts with the refrigerator also running. You're talking about running two major appliances on solar in a pretty epic way. So you keep the airstream cool, that helps the refrigerator run better. You're, 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 you don't have to run a generator to run your air conditioner. And I think that's really important for us anyway. If you're at an RV park where you're paying for electricity, and at this case with us, it's 17 cents per kilowatt hour, well, you can imagine running a 3000 watt air conditioner for eight, nine hours a day, that is going to add up to about 60 bucks a month, plus your other electrical, other things like that. In this case, we can stay at this RV park and we can run everything on solar. So we're not even using the electricity anymore. And so now you're at an RV park with full amenities, but you're not really paying for electricity, which I think is also win-win. Now, here are the cons about this. Those are the pros, here are the cons. The cons are is that it will go through four gallons of water when you turn it on high pretty quick, probably in about two hours. So you're gonna have to keep refilling that water pan all the time. It does have a mechanism where you can attach a hose to it and drip it in as the water gets low, the ball cock opens up, it lets water in and refills the pan automatically. That's up to you. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna choose not to do that um, and if we're in the airstream all the time, we can just refill the water pan, no worries. If we leave and we're gonna be gone for a few hours at a time, when we're at an RV park, we'll probably turn on the air conditioning for the dogs. We're probably not gonna run this. So it, it's kind of a, a give and take, you know, how you wanna operate this. The cool thing about this is that the hotter it gets outside, the cooler this gets. So if, it, if the air temperature is gonna rise another 10 degrees, this is probably gonna cool down another 10 degrees. So that's a huge, huge plus. It does not work like an air conditioner. You have to keep a window open. And in this case, our door is open. So we're letting all that hot air come in next to the cooler, which completely cools the back of the Airstream 20 degrees cooler. That's, that's pretty epic, that's pretty big. So you have to kind of decide what your lifestyle is and if this is right for you. We bought this at Ace Hardware in Cottonwood, Arizona for $160, $160. Now, if you're running at 17 cents a kilowatt hour, you can see at 60 bucks a month or maybe even more that if you're gonna be at this RV park for an extended stay, this cooler pays for itself in about two and a half months. So, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer. The other thing too, I like it, it's mobile. So I can bring this in a van. I, if I had an inverter hooked up to my uh, van battery, I can run this in the van too if we're backpacking and we wanna have air conditioning in the van. The other cool thing about it is that if you have solar and you have a Jackery box, 
and you're, you're tent camping, you could throw this in your tent. If you're in a, a dry climate area, if you're in a low hum, humid area, it's not gonna work in Georgia, it's not gonna work in the Southeast. In high humidity, and that's the other thing you have to you have to make sure about. So I'm gonna put a link below so you can go and check it out on Amazon. Do your research, do your due diligence. Uh, but if you like what you see, um, I think it is definitely an alternative and possibly solution to save some money. So go ahead and check out the link below. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, go ahead and subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and we will see you in our next video. We'll see you later, bye.